Members. Members, the Right Honourable, the Lord Mayor. City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday, 13th of February 2018. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by council, including transferring outside of Australia. The red light to my right indicates that the meeting is being filmed and streamed. Council acknowledges that we are meeting on the traditional country of the Kaurna people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respect to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, belief, beliefs and relationship with the land. We acknowledge they have continuing importance to the Kaurna people living today. We also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are present today. The Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with the six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Members, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Members, item three, apologies and leaves of absence. We have, uh, on leave, we have uh, no members, but we have an apologies from three members, Councillor Corbell Moore, Councillor Abiyad, and Councillor Malani. <laughs> members, before we proceed with our agenda proper, I will bring to your attention that a couple of items have been withdrawn from your agenda this evening, members, and that is item 7.4, power outage support for ratepayers and also the motion on notice from Councillor Moran, which is item 10.1. CEO, I believe you'd like to speak briefly about the item 13.1, uh, which is the confidential matter. Through you, Lord Mayor, just, just to advise that we will be deferring item 13.1 um, to a committee meeting next week, as I think it deserves greater scrutiny and investigation. Thank you, members, and thank you for your flexibility. So, members, I will then proceed to item four, which is confirmation of minutes, of which you have uh, two prior meetings to confirm the minutes and adopt. Meeting held on the 28th, the 11th, and meeting held on the 30th of January. Moved by Councillor Martin. Can I have a seconder, please, members? Councillor Moran, any questions or queries about those minutes, members? Summing up, Councillor Martin. Members, I'll put this before you. Those in favour to adopt, those against, we carry and we adopt the minutes from both those meetings. Thank you very much. Uh, members, we on your papers, you will note through from 5.1 to 5.4, a number of deputations and public forums. 5.4 has withdrawn, so we have three being a deputation firstly from Mr. Rob Stoller, proposed ice rink event at Victoria Square. Mr. Stoller, are you with us? No, so I'll proceed to item 5.2, which is a public forum from Rachel Healy, the Adelaide Festival Program Brief. Welcome, Ms Healy, and the councillors will afford you a period of uh, five minutes, and uh, welcome to the Town Hall Chamber. Thank you very much, Lord Mayor. The 2018 Adelaide Festival starts in 17 days. Starting in 1960, it's the 33rd time the city has hosted this mighty event, an event that has long been described as Australia's preeminent international arts festival, and in the last few days was listed in American Express's top 20 theatre festivals around the world. It is the only Australian arts festival in the list. 
In 2017, the festival delivered a total of 13,752 visitors to the state, which equates to 69,024 visitor nights. There was 7,173 out-of-state new visitors, with 55,000 visitor nights created. There were 6.05 million excluding tickets of newly created expenditure and 3.3 million of retained newly created expenditure. We surveyed our 2017 ticket buyers and received nearly 2,000 responses. 95% of the people surveyed said they plan to attend the festival again in future years. This year's festival is on track to beat last year's record results. In 2018, we will stage 202 performances or events, 108 Routers Week sessions, and 181 individual WOMAD performances. We'll host 1,576 artists and their crew, of which 664 come from all corners of the globe, including Palestine, Switzerland, Netherlands, Belgium, Spain, France, America, Canada, and Egypt. Plus 825 local performers will participate, 87 writers at Writers Week, and 65 WOMAD artists from 38 different countries. But aside from the statistics and economic impact of the event is the social, community and cultural value that this event offers its community. In 2018, the Adelaide Festival program includes two remarkable events that will see large numbers of South Australians take to the stage. The Lost and Found Orchestra will involve 500 South Australians, creating an event in Elder Park like no other. Working with the extraordinary percussionists of Stomp, the orchestra uses a collection of found objects, including water coolers, witches' hats, and plumbers' piping that are turned into very serious musical instruments. These in instruments are made, tuned, and performed here in Adelaide, leaving a legacy of skills, knowledge, and experiences for all the South Australians who are part of it. They will perform to thousands of people in Elder Park as part of the festival's opening weekend. The night before, Brink Theatre's production of Memorial will open. Like Lost and Found, this is the kind of project only possible because of the network's knowledge and platform of the Adelaide Festival. An ambitious new theatre event, its premiere season in Adelaide will be followed by seasons in Brisbane and then in London, a prestigious Barbican Arts Centre. It involves 215 people from the local community performing on stage in each of the cities in which it is performed. These events will play alongside a carefully curated international program which offers as Adelaide audiences and its visitors a taste of the most imaginative, acclaimed and thrilling works from all over the world. It's hard to put a value on those experiences, sitting in the quarry moments after the Secret River had concluded, for example, but talking to audiences and receiving their letters, it is very easy to comprehend the value that our community feel that the festival is offering and the value it's given to people's lives here. And for the political tragics in the room, if this council chamber doesn't offer quite enough political manoeuvring, brinkmanship and treachery, don't miss Kings of War from Tunnel Group Amsterdam at the Festival Theatre. It's had rave reviews in the New York Times and has been compared to House of Cards in its study of power in the 21st century. It's really not to be missed. Finally, this is Adelaide's oldest and most prestigious festival and Adelaide, the Adelaide community are justifi justifiably proud of its achievements. It takes a village to raise a child, but a city, its community, its government and its businesses to share a vision for building an event of Adelaide Festival's international reputation and stature. I look forward to seeing you all there. Thank you, Ms Healy, and we wish you every success with the 2018 program. Well done. Members, we have a deputation from Mr Ian Vag regarding the Adelaide Oval SMA Boundary Revision Application, item 7.3 on your papers. Mr Vag, welcome to the City of Adelaide Council Chamber. Councillors, thank you for your time. In 2013, after about six months of uh, conciliation and negotiation in the licensing court, the Adelaide Oval SMA was granted a license, quite a generous license by the standards of the day, which certainly allowed them to conduct the events uh, and sporting fixtures that they wanted to do. From that, uh, conciliation process. A number of residents who had been who lived in North Adelaide, adjacent to the Oval, who had been concerned about noise, came away feeling that they had got um, a genuine agreement which protected the North Parklands in particular from any licensed activity or music. What they were unaware of, however, was the way the temporary licences work. And the 
Uh, SMA very soon after started applying for temporary licences which allowed them to serve liquor and, and, and carry out entertainment on the eastern concourse outside the east gate and in the northern car park. Um, I understand that whilst there was entertainment on the eastern concourse, uh, there was never or hardly ever any on the north car park. Um, to be fair, this went, has gone on since then and there have been no complaints and the residents were not aware this was happening. Uh, so it's not been high impact. The, liquor, the commissioner, however, got sick of issuing temporary licences and last year told them they had to make this permanent. The, um, therefore, in September, the SMA made an application for a permanent licence. However, they didn't just ask for what they said they wanted, which was the same conditions as a temporary licence. They asked for a licence for both entertainment and liquor, which would have allowed them to serve liquor from seven and have entertainment from 7 a.m. to 2 a.m. the next morning, any day of the year, which caused no small amount of consternation amongst the residents, which brings us really to tonight. It's on the public record that the SMA has said all they want is what they had under the temporary licences. Um, and with that in mind, and after a number of attempts, and if you recall in November, this council raised as landlord objected in total to that licence application. It went to the conciliator who um, sent the SMA back to present the council with modified plans. Um, and here we are tonight discussing that. Um, the, the Lord Mayor before Christmas asked me if I would act as a representative um, in a three corner of the objectors and, and the residents in a three corner meeting with members of the administration and the SMA. Um, I agreed to that. The first meeting was scheduled about the 22nd of December and for reasons beyond his control, Mr Daniels was not able to attend. Um, nevertheless, we started from the premise of what they had in the temporary licences and work from that. And the recommended motion you have before you tonight gives them pretty, the SMA pretty much everything they had in the temporary licences, but no more. In the meantime, the SMA has re suggested that they would reduce the area on the North Parklands to not be the whole car park, but roughly half the car park. Um, but of course they were sticking also for entertainment. The motion tonight, uh, allow, having, as I said, never actually had entertainment on North Car Park and that being the main concern to the residents, the motion tonight allows what is called quiet activation and that has been rather more precisely defined than previously, but no entertainment on North Car Park. Um, I believe Councillor Martin has some relatively minor amendments to um, uh, tie up a few definitions, but I, on behalf of quite a number of the residents, including two of the main objectors, recommend, would, if it would like to ask you to pass that, amend, that uh, motion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr Van. Members, item six on your agenda, which is advice from the Adelaide Parklands Authority and reports of other committee. There are no items, so I'll take you immediately on to item seven, which are reports of council. Uh, members, you've got before you on, and before I do proceed, I'll just actually, uh, Mr. Rob Stoller, just to confirm that Mr. Stoller has not joined us in the chamber in the interim. He hasn't, so I'll keep the meeting moving. Um, members, I'll take you directly to item 7.1 on your agendas, which is the report with regards to, and you've got a recommendation before you on page three regarding East End activity. I'm in your hands, members. Sorry, Lord Mayor, can I just remind Council of the email that was sent out late this afternoon by Director Ian Hill for reference? 
information on that? I've not seen it. CEO, would uh, our director like to speak to that email just so the members are fully informed and then I'll look back to the floor for a motion based on the recommendation we have. Yeah, three, Lord Mayor, it's raised to the financial aspects of the report and I will ask Ian to talk to that. Thanks, Ian. Uh, three, Lord Mayor, just the brief update this afternoon to say that the financial request of $165,000 would be uh, provided through our Q2 uh, review, uh, so essentially absorbed through our operations rather than new money. Thank you very much, Ian. <coughs> Councillor Hendon. You'd like, you're moving as printed? Okay, I'll look for a second. Councillor Slama had a hand up second. Uh, Councillor Hendon, would you like to speak to this matter? I reserve my right. Councillor Slama, would you like to speak to this matter? I reserve my right. Members, I look to you. Any questions, queries, or debate? Councillor Hendon, back to you. Summed up, Bob. Okay. Councillors, to the floor. Those in favour? Those against? Item 7.1 carried. Members, item 7.2 which is car share policy. You've got a recommendation to approve item 7.2. I look to you. Councillor Clarehan. You move this printed. Councillor Hender. Councillor Clarehan, you wish to speak to the matter? Councillor Hender, you wish to speak to the matter? Members, any queries or debate? Councillor Martin. Yeah, just very briefly, Lord Mayor, I, uh, I agonised over whether or not it should be moved as uh, an amendment. Um, but it does seem to me that um, uh, Council is making a significant concession to uh, car share companies to relocate to Adelaide by making available car spaces uh, to uh, the bottom of three every quarter as uh, a means of encouraging them to set up business. Um, but at the same time, there is to be no fee, uh, no permit fee, no administrative charge, but substantial administrative costs. And given that we're talking of applying fees to permits for bike share companies, it would seem to me that it would be not unreasonable for the administration to consider the application of a fee for permits for car share companies per vehicle based on real administrative costs, uh, simply as a means of recovering those costs. Uh, again, I repeat, there is a substantial incentive provided by the city, that is giving up a car park that may generate hundreds a week, thousands a year, uh, and uh, that should be sufficient. Uh, so uh, can I ask the administration, could we consider uh, investigating a cost recovery fee for car share. CEO. Yeah, through your Mayor, it's intended that initially it would be free of charge, I understand, but every year as part of the budget process we set our fees and charges. It would certainly be a factor in that consideration, so we'll be able to do that annually. Thank you. Members, do I have any further debate regarding this matter? No. Councillor Hender, you reserve your right. Councillor Clarehan, you moved. Back to you. Summed up, Lord Mayor. Members, I put this before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry item 7.2. Members, that takes us directly to item 7.3, Adelaide Oval Redefinition of Existing Special Circumstances Licensed Area. Councillor Martin, you are? Moving a uh, variation. Moving a variation or alternate motion, Councillor? Alternate motion, I think, about more people. Okay. And uh, Councillor Martin, uh, before I seek a seconder, I will just, um, uh, if you could please confirm for the benefit of your fellow elected members that what is on the screen in red represents the changes of which you are making to the recommendation. Uh, that's correct, Lord Mayor. Uh, those words in red uh, represent the changes, except in respect of uh, 11, which I suggest is not necessarily an amendment. Uh, it was simply a note to correct a typo. Um, so uh, the amendments are in 6, 8 and 10, and I'm happy to read them if uh, that would suit the Lord Mayor. If you could please, um, this is relatively new, and uh, then I will foreshadow that I look to Councillor Clarehan who had her hand up, but I'd like the members to be very clear about what they're debating. So if you could please read that. Yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, it is a variation to the recommendation of the administration at page 31. Six, 
supports the redefinition of the special circumstances licensed area subject to the conditions as at attachment D to item 7.3 on the agenda for the meeting of the Council hold on 30th February 2018 being included in the special circumstances license in addition to the conditions already attached to the Adelaide Oval Stadium Management Authority Special Circumstances Licence 51209495, comma, along with the provision that liquor may only be sold to and consumed by persons who hold valid admission tickets to the event on the Oval. Eight, authorises the CEO or delegate to advise the Liquor and Gambling Commissioner that Council does not support the granting slash issuing of limited licences for the sale and consumption of alcohol within the Adelaide Oval Stadium Management Licensed Area as at attachment E brackets Stella Vaughan Park, including the North Car Park, close brackets to item 7.3 on the agenda for the meeting of the council held on the 13th of February 2018 outside of the redefined circumstances license and 10 authorizes the CEO or delegate to advise the Adelaide Oval Stadium Management Authority that council will not grant landlord consent within the Adelaide Oval Stadium Management Authority licensed area as at attachment E to item 7.3 on the agenda for the meeting of the council held on the 13th of February 2018 for the use of Stella Bowen Park, including North Car Park, by the Adelaide Oval Stadium Management Authority for the sale and consumption of alcohol, excluding area two as delineated on the map as at attachment B to item 7.3 on the agenda for the meeting of the council held on the 13th of February 2018. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Clarehan, you're seconding. So yes, Councillor Martin, back to you, three minutes. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, um, let me just reiterate uh, again that there is a typo at 4.7 of attachment D, and I'd ask the administration to fix that by simply adding the word immediately in front of the police. Uh, Lord Mayor, uh, I want to congratulate uh, you, uh, the administration, and the residents who, as Mr. Bag explained, have worked together to create an agreement which I think is a compromise, the best possible compromise under the circumstances. Uh, this uh, recommendation and the amendments are not the end, they will simply go to the Consumer and Business Services area and the Liquor and Gaming Commissioner to be considered at a hearing and considered as the Council's position. Now, I've come to this uh, position myself of putting forward the motion and the amendments with uh, a great deal of reluctance because I think uh, Councillor Moran is right. Um, this is, uh, it represents creep. Um, there's no other way of describing it. Um, personally, I, I don't trust that the SMA will leave it at this. I think they'll keep pushing uh, and they'll always want to push for more. It's a business and the business is selling alcohol and providing entertainment. Um, now, uh, faced with a, uh, a decision of uh, the stick it up your nose approach or alternatively um, by making a decision to support the recommendation with some amendments uh, was a dilemma uh, and frankly uh, I decided that it is much better uh, to be able to try to influence the process than simply say no I'm not going to participate. Now this way we're putting forward a series of conditions to give the SMA what it wants. That is uh, two areas outside of the uh, Oval for people to have a drink, 500 in area one, which allows for quiet activation and 300 in area two. Um, with trading hours that are linked to when the Oval is open and no later than 2300 hours. Uh, the amendments are firstly and acknowledgement of the circumstance of which the SMA says it wants to change its license, that is to be able to sell liquor to people who move outside of the Oval and have a drink at some stage, whether that's half time, interval or whatever. Um, and then uh, it also, through the amendment, that is uh, the, the addition of the words, liquor may only be sold to or consumed by persons who hold valid admission tickets to the event or Oval, formalizes that very position. That is, it is people who are attending the Oval who can make use of that facility. And it addresses the concern I know some people have that without 
there's the possibility of car loads of people turning up simply to have a drink. Lord Mayor, may, may I have uh, just a... I'll look to your fellow members for comfort. Thank you. Yes, you have it. Two more minutes, Councillor. Now, um, uh, somebody asked me, how does that work? Uh, how is it possible to administer that? It's pretty easy. Um, it's done in similar places, uh, or events rather, like Warm Adelaide. You go outside, uh, security reminds you, you need a ticket to get back in, or alternatively, you can have an elephant stamp or whatever it is on your wrist. Um, it is not a major administrative effort. It's a simple process to administer. Now, um, the last two amendments are about making the wording absolutely clear because the wording is not as clear as I and residents would like. Um, we stipulate that we are talking about area two that extends over part of the hard stand car park and that area must not extend onto the Stellabon Park, including the car park, outside of the area which is shown in the papers here tonight at attachment E on page 52. It's just a matter of making the words more precise. Now, um, of course, the amendments will need to be reflected in the attachments, and I'd ask the administration to do that if this is successful. Um, but I'm asking members if they will support this. It does represent, as I said earlier, the best possible compromise under the circumstances. It is one that the residents will see as reasonable, and I'm hopeful that the Commission and the SMA will also see it as a reasonable outcome. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Clare, had you seconded the motion? Do you care to speak to it? Thank you, Lord Mayor. I won't go over the details that have um, that Councillor Martin has just presented, except to say I want to thank you, our administration, and Mr Ian Vag and those residents that have come to the table. I think this is how it should be done, uh, and I really appreciate uh, the good intent of all parties to come to some sort of compromise. And I think that our administration, along with um, Mr. Bag, have identified the key issues. I mean, we talk about um, a compromise position, um, given the fear of the creep into the parklands of the Adelaide Oval activity. Um, some have called it a Trojan horse. Well, I think this compromise actually probably re represents a shackling of that force um, because the conditions that have been put up to present to the uh, Liquor Licensing Commissioner I think are fair and reasonable and I think will address the major concerns, including the issue around um, amplified music and hours of operation. So um, I just want to say again thank you very much to all those parties who came together with good intent and have come up with a reasonable compromise that everyone can live with. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Fairhead. Councillor Moran. Um, yes, I, I thank um, the two councillors that moved and seconded, but I, I won't be supporting um, this motion. Um, I think we have to go right back to first principles. Um, this is for smokers. There's plenty of room in the Oval to have a drink and sit down. This is to accommodate the dwindling number of smoking people. Um, the Oval, uh, quite rightly, or uh, gains a lot of cachet from advertising itself as a smoke-free zone. Now, I think this is a, a peculiar way of doing it by bulging out into the parklands, not the Northern Car Park, the parklands, to allow them to have their cake and eat it too. I'd say that they, if this goes through, they relinquish their smoke-free zone, which they won't do. Um, they had a smoking area inside an oval too, but of course they couldn't call themselves a smoke-free venue then. So they had to come up with this, uh, this rather convoluted way of having, as I said, having their cake and eat it, eating it too. And not to, not to forget that this is gathered round the northern and the eastern gates. Um, I'm sure they're not actually in the direct line of the gates, so you, don't, you can't walk through the licensed smoking area to get into the oval, but it's right there. I don't know any other area that this council, who has made smoke-free zones in North Terrace by the hospitals, 
um, smoke-free zones to access and egress in uh, major events um, that would agree to this. I can only think that it is, to use the hackney phrase, the gun to the head of, if you don't say yes, we'll sack you. Um, I think that's a disgraceful way that the SMA has behaved, and I hate to think that we took any, any, uh, that got any traction with us. Um, I was on council when the original agreement was made, the licence uh, lease agreements, and it was never countenance that they would extend out of the hard area of the stadium. Everything would be faced inwards, the, the drinking would be, uh, the events would be there, the drinking and the socialising would be on the area around oval number two. So I think this is, I can, I totally, and I'm not criticising the mover and the thing, but they've, they've made, tried to make a uh, silk purse out of a sow's ear, but it's a sow's ear still. How, how could we countenance them the thought of a smoking area outside the oval, where we wouldn't countenance anywhere else? Um, it was never in the original agreement countenanced and there was no problem from the Oval people there. They said, of course we won't go out there, we've got plenty of room. As if there's not enough room to, to drink yourself silly inside the Oval. I'm a smoker, an ex-smoker, and I never thought when I stepped out of a venue that I'd stand right by the gate having a fag and then somebody would put a beer in my hand at the same time. We must be the most generous, uh, generous um, uh, landlords. But don't, don't respond to this, Gunter. We are quite within our rights to say, no, this isn't in the lease agreements. You can't have it. And I can assure you, we will not be sacked. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Hender. If I wasn't going to speak, but I still want to let you respond to that because I, I don't understand the gun to the head um, idea at all. I, I don't feel any gun to my head. Oh, I'm sorry. If we didn't say yes to this, we would have our powers. I completely missed that. Well, luckily, that just slipped straight past me because I thought it was over. My motivation for supporting this is that it is the status quo. So the, um, the council, sorry, the, uh, the SMA has been running magnificent events at that stadium since it opened. It's been, to my mind, running them well. It's been running some of them with some external activity. <coughs> That's been done, we've heard from the uh, residents, not to their detriment, in fact, not to anybody's detriment. And the uh, Stadium Management Authority has sought the authority to continue to do what they're currently doing and currently doing well. And uh, I can see no reason why we shouldn't uh, support that very sensible approach. And, um, and so I thank um, councillors, but thank those people who worked on it and Councillor Martin for his uh, amendments. I did wonder a little about the amendment that um, limited the, um, uh, the patronage to people who are already involved at the, at the um, activities at the stadium. Um, and uh, I understand from Councillor Martin his motivation for that comes from speaking to licensees in North Adelaide uh, who are keen that. Um, this doesn't become an alternative licence venue for people other than people who will be attending events in that place anyway. So they can drink inside or they can drink outside, but they must be attending an event there. And I can see the force in that. And so I thank Councillor Mark for his sensible and considered um, amendments. Thank you, Councillor Hedford. Councillor Wilkinson. A clarification from the administration. Uh, on page 40, Six, paragraph 1.9 talks about areas mark one and two uh, where the activity uh, in the oval finishes at 11 p.m. or or whichever is the earlier. Originally, they were seeking to be able to trade here till two o'clock in the morning and stuff like that. So, am, am I correct in my reading that uh, because one of the things that um, Councillor uh, Martin's motion doesn't refer to is the loss of trade to hotels in North Adelaide. And the whole deal that was put to us was that uh, that they would benefit from people after games. But but from my reading of this, they they cannot. As soon as the game's finished, the doors come down. And they can't keep serving alcohol. Is that correct, or or can they continue to serve alcohol? some time after a game has finished where people will drink there in lieu of 
businesses in Northern Ireland. Thank you. Uh, Vanessa, thanks. Um, through the presiding member, um, the sale and consumption of liquor, what we're recommending, so the attachment I think that the council is referring to is the conditions that were proposed by the SMA. Um, and we've made a slight amendment to that condition to refer to when events can start, to, um, when they can start the sale of liquor, um, but it must cease at the time at which the activity on the oval finishes or at 11 p.m., whichever is earlier. So if the event um, goes beyond 11 p.m., the sale and consumption of liquor would still need to cease at 11 p.m. in those areas. And the activity being the game itself, not, not some other post-match. That's right, whatever's happening on the oval. So if the activity finished earlier, then the sale and consumption of liquor would need to finish earlier in those areas. Okay. Well, I'm quite vexed with this, and I was, was of the view that we did the deal with the State of Management Authority to keep the outside area to the south, the city side, keep it away from residents and really wasn't of a mind to entertain it at all. But that limitation on the hours such that they can't trade after the game, either in the Oval or outside the Oval, that does mean that people at the, at the Men of Wisdom Blows will have to leave and go if they want to keep drinking, and then they'll go and patronise businesses in North Adelaide and the city, which is what we wanted to have happen so they wouldn't just corral all of that themselves. So that does give me some comfort for those interests because that was the original deal. Um, and uh, I think uh, the uh, amendment from Councillor Martin about it only being available for people who will be going to the game anyway means you won't get just people who are smokers wanting to watch it on a big TV there rather than at a licensed venue somewhere else in North Adelaide or the city. So I think that uh, that amendment actually uh, uh, would, would, would work provided it is enforced. So um, I think on the strength of that and that the residents themselves are uh, happy with, the, uh, with this final resolution, um, uh, I, I wouldn't have been happy with uh, what was originally put to us, but I think with these refinements and all of the work that um, have <coughs> done to sort of um, uh, shackle a horse, you might say, um, it's, um, uh, uh, I think it's something which I can uh, accept. Thank you, members. Do I have any further debate before I move you back to Councillor Martin? Before I do move you back to Councillor Martin, I echo many of the comments in this council chamber. I do thank, uh, which I think has been a deep and protracted period of consultation and engagement with our community members to get these policy setting rights right. And uh, thank you, Councillor Martin. Uh, good work on your behalf. Oh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I really should be uh, thanking you again and also the residents and the SMA for the progress that was made. Can I just address one small point before we go further? And that is, I do understand there was an agreement reached in 2013 or earlier with the SMA uh, with regard uh, to the sale of liquor and it being confined to the walls of the, uh, the Oval. Uh, however, uh, our position has been compromised to some extent because for the period ever since, um, we have been issuing temporary licenses to the Stadium Management Authority to sell alcohol outdoors. Um, and therefore, our position cannot be clear. We are compromised by having agreed to that position. Uh, and in those circumstances, um, my guess is that the uh, the licensing and the, the gaming court would have a, uh, a particular view, would be influenced by that. Um, and, and just finally, in terms of smoking, I, I take uh, Councillor Moran's uh, comments um, uh, seriously. It, it is incongru incongruous that there is a smoke-free venue that seeks to cater for smokers. However, uh, we do live in a, a world that is not clear cut. Um, smoking is still legal. Uh, I see it outside cinemas, I see it outside supermarkets, um, and uh, we are not moving to ban those people from smoking cigarettes or vaping, even I might add. But um, uh, 
<laughs> but um, it would need, in my view, some substantial advice from the administration about how you might do that before we even considered whether it was something we wanted to do. Anyway, look, uh, again, thank you to all involved, and I do uh, ask members to support this. Thank you, Councillor. Members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? <laughs> Those against? So the item is carried in favour. Members, uh, noting that item 7.4 on your agendas this evening has been uh, withdrawn, I will take you directly to item 7.5, which is the novation of one card agreement on page 59 of your papers. Councillor Moran, you are I'm moving as printed. You're moving as printed, Councillor. I look for a seconder with Councillor Clarehan. Councillor Moran, do you wish to speak to the matter? No. Councillor Clarehan, would you wish to speak to the matter? No. Members, I look to you. Any debate, queries, questions? No. Councillor Clarehan, you reserved your right, so I'm going to take you back to Councillor Moran, who moved the motion. Summed up. Summed up. Members, I put this directly before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry. That's item 7.5. Members, that takes us on to item 7.6, Civic Governance Arrangements, page 67. Deputy Lord Mayor, you are moving as printed. Councillor Moran, you're seconded. Deputy Lord Mayor, do you wish to speak to the matter? Councillor Moran, do you wish to speak to the matter? No. Members, I look to you. Deputy Lord Mayor. Summed up. Members, to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? Item carried. Thank you, members. Members, I take you to item eight, which is the, uh, my mistake, item 7.6, which is civic governance arrangements. Now, members, no, my mistake, I've done the first part of it, members. What I now need to do, thank you, Judy, is members, with regards to our committee structures, which you've now in uh, substantively voted for, we now need to choose a chair and a deputy chair for three periods of time through to the caretaker period of this term of council in 2018. So, members, at uh, 7.1, I would need a nomination for a chair for the period of April to June, uh, noting members that, of course, that the chair's role is a pecuniary, pecuniary role and a deputy chair is not. So I need a chair for the period of April to June to have a nomination. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, you had your hand up first. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'd like to nominate Councillor Slammer. Councillor Slammer, uh, if the members accept, would you accept uh, to be the chair of the committee for the period of April to June? Yes. You would? Members, do I have any further nominations for that period? I don't. I now need a deputy oh, chair. So, Councillor Martin. Oh, look, I was just going to nominate Councillor Wilkinson um, in the expectation that we didn't get this, you might get the next one. Okay, but I know I'm going to look for a deputy chair at this point in time. I'll do this in three parts, if I may, members. So, do I have a nomination for the deputy chair for the period for April to June? Were you nominated, Councillor Wilkinson, for that? I'm not sure who wants it. Were you nominating for the chair? No. No. I was nominating for the chair. Oh, for the chair. Yes. Noting, of course, Councillors, that you've got three periods here. I'm going to be asking you to vote for a chair for the period April to June, July to September, and then October and November. You get three bites of the charity members. I'll withdraw my nomination and make it clear cut and nominate the council. Thank you very much, Councillor. I now I do though need a deputy chair nomination for the first period, which is April to June. I need someone in the room, Councillor Moran. Well, I'm happy to be nominated for the deputy chair. It's not the is it? No, it's not. And it's just standing in with someone's That is correct. To do okay, so uh, members, I need someone to nominate. Councillor Moran is nominating Councillor Hender. Councillor Hender accepts if successful. Now, I'm going to take us to a vote. So, Councillor Slama, I need you to leave the room and we'll deal point with 7.1. Members, can I please have a motion from our member to move that, please? Councillor Clareham, seconded by the Deputy Lord Mayor. I'll put this before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry. If we could bring Councillor Slama back in the room now, members, and I'll then proceed when he's back to the second part of the equation this evening, which is item 7.2, 
which is for a chair for the period for July to September. So I need a nominee. Councillor Martin? I nominate Councillor Wilkinson. Councillor Wilkinson, do you accept? Should the members vote in accordance? You do? Do I have any further nominees for that period? I don't. So members, I now need a deputy chair for the same period. Councillor Martin? Uh, I nominate Councillor Clarehan. Mr Deputy, happy to do deputy. Thank you, Councillor Clarehan. So, Councillor, do I, Councillor uh, Wilkinson, I need you to leave the room while we vote on this matter. So, I now need a motion, members. Moved by Councillor Martin, seconded by Councillor Slama. This is to appoint Councillor Wilkinson as the chair and Councillor Clarehan as the deputy chair for the period July to December. I'll put that before you. Those in favour? Those against, we carry. If we could please bring Councillor Wilkinson back into the chamber. Welcome back and congratulations, Councillor. Member, we, members, we now get to item 7.3, which is uh, the same process again for a shorter period, being October and November. So, Deputy Lord Mayor. I'd like to nom nominate uh, Councillor Moran. Councillor Moran, do you accept? Should the members vote accordingly? You're not in a position to negotiate on this one, Councillor Moran. <laughs> not at this point in time, but I'm assuming that's a yes, so I now need a deputy chair for the same period. You're nominating? Councillor Deputy Lord Mayor, so, okay. So now, Councillor Moran, I need you to leave the chamber. And members, I look to you for a motion. Moved by Councillor Slama, seconded by Councillor Wilkinson. I now put this before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry. If we could welcome Councillor Moran back into the room. And members, thank you for that. That now concludes item 7.6, which is our civic governance arrangements for a period. Thank you. Members, there's a supplementary prize of steak knives. Um, members, we also have a chair and a deputy chair for... Just take advice, please, members. Members, uh, for the Strategic Planning and Development Policy Committee, of course, which is our statutory committee, uh, members, I have to work through the same process. So I'm now going to look to you, this again, this is 7.1, this is for the April to June period. This is for the Strategic Planning and Development Policy Committee. I'm presuming that, that is a pecuniary position. It is, so again, it's a pecuniary position. I need a chair for the period, or a nominee for a chair, for the period April to June. Councillor Moran, you are nominating? No, I'll nominate Councillor Bershaw. Deputy Lord Mayor? Uh, sure. Thank you. Do I have any further nominees for that period? I don't, and I need a deputy chair for that same period, April to June, for the Strategic Planning and Development Policy Committee. If someone was willing to nominate me, I was happy to do it for that period. Okay, Councillor Slama is nominating. You'd accept if nominated. Any further nominees for deputy chair? No, so Deputy Lord Mayor, I need you to leave the chamber. Members, this is for the period April to June. And I need a motion. Moved by Councillor Clarehan, seconded by Councillor Slama. I put that before you. Those in favour? Those against, we carry. If we could welcome the Deputy Lord Mayor back into the chamber, please, Ed. Thank you. Congratulations, members. Now, we look to the same period, oh, sorry, my mistake, the same committee, but a different period, which is July to December. Do I have a nomination for Chair Councillor Slama? You are nominating? Uh, Councillor Clarehan. Councillor Clarehan, do you accept? Do I have any further nominations for that period, members? I don't. I now need a deputy. No. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Hender, you are nominating Councillor Slama. Councillor Slama, do you accept? Okay, thank you very much. Councillor Clarehan, I need you to leave the chamber, please.
Any members can I look to you for a motion, please? Moved by Council Moran, seconded by Councillor Martin. Members, I put this all before you. Those in favour? Those against, we carry. If we could welcome Councillor Clarahan back into the chamber, please. Last but not least, members, for the Strat Planning and Development Policy Committee, October, November period, I need a nomination for a nominee for a chair. Councillor Slammer. Councillor Wilkinson. Councillor Wilkinson, do you accept should you be successfully voted upon? Thank you. Any further nominations for chair? Members, I need a deputy chair for the same period. Councillor Clarehan, you are nominating Councillor Moran. Councillor Moran, you accept. Thank you very much. So I require Councillor Wilkinson to leave the chamber. Thank you. Members, can I please have a mover of a motion? Moved by Councillor Clarehan, seconded by the Deputy Lord Mayor. Members, I put this before you. Those in favour? Those against, we carry. If we can welcome Councillor Wilkinson back into the chamber. Thank you very much, members. Uh, that concludes item 7.6, and I will take you directly to item 8 on your agenda, questions on notice. We have no questions on notice, so it will take you to questions without notice, item 9. Any questions without notice, members? I don't see any hands, which takes us directly to, I will take you to item 10.2, noting that item 10.1 has been withdrawn. Item 10.2, Council Moran, motion on notice, CCTV cameras, Hut Street, page 84 of your papers. Council Moran. I'm ready to print it. <clears throat> Look to a seconder. Uh, not at this point in time, you need to either approve as a seconder. Um, Lord Mayor, perhaps I could explain. <clears throat> I would like to invite, um, I want to slightly change number two, and um, I've spoken to, to um, Councillor Antet, and he can request a variation to say. Okay, Councillor, um, you can't vary your own motion, given oh, that there's a motion on notice, mm -hmm. but what we can do is that you can, we can secure a seconder, and then you can have a suggestion for a variation from oh, the floor, or it can be amended, should you wish. So, who got hand up first? Oh, I think it was Councillor Antic, and I apologise, Councillor Wilkinson, but Councillor Antic was, uh, I think, first up. So, Councillor Brown. I still don't quite understand. I want to change in number two, uh, sorry, in three, to establish to investigate. Okay, so what, I, what would need to happen procedurally is you would need your seconder or Another member from I the floor. I think I seconded to suggest that. Okay. He suggested that. I'm accepting that as a variation. Okay. So could we be very clear about what we're debating now, please? Uh, part, part three. Instead of establish, I'll change to investigate on um, on advice from the administration. Understand. So we're doing that as variation members. Do I see general comfort from the room with regards to the change of that single word? I do. Thank you. The floor is yours now for the debate. Thank you. Look, um, I, I don't think um, we need to um, really um, say any more about the problems, well, to expand on the problems in um, the uh, southern section of Hutt Street. Um, it has been discussed in the media and I know that the council discussed it between themselves. The situation has got um, rapidly worse. I used to live near there and I thought when the residents and businesses were saying things to me, that it was the same old problem. But having gone down there myself and um, and uh, spoken to them, it has suddenly become a lot more acute. Um, I think, as we've said, it's probably the um, the ice, the drug ice addiction suddenly hitting um, some people that are homeless. I spoke to the homeless people who are scared to go down there because of the, um, the violence and the criminality down there. So look, I'm not going to suggest a panacea for all evils, but um, what would make, um, some people are putting their own <coughs> CCTVs in, um, but of course these are reactionary, they're good, I mean, very handy, but what we need, is, as we had uh, spoke to the police the other day, we need some monitored cameras. 
um, down there so that um, you know there can be a quick response. And um, the meeting we had with the police, while they're a little bit uh, overloaded, they were they said well, you know that they supported cameras. Um, the original report from Councillor Antics was to put 12 down there. Um, I think that's deemed excessive. I was asked by the Deputy Lord Mayor what the magic number five was, and I, I really don't know, but it's less than 12. It will put three on one side of the street and two on the other, but um, uh, that could be jiggled when we could afford more or put them in, uh, in a stage thing. But I think the CCTVs in this, and I'm not a big CCTV fan, it's, it's a um, um, it's something that I think is needed in this very specific location. Um, the second um, section part of it is, um, oh sorry, the first part is that we noted the previous decision. The second part is to put CCTVs. The third is to look at um, an incentive scheme that can help people afford having their own CCTVs in this specific area, businesses and residents. Um, in speaking to the police and speaking to the residents, they long ceased reporting a lot of the activities. Just while I've been sitting here, um, a lady's texted me saying that uh, she was screamed at in a very abusive way just an hour ago. She was frightened. Um, she said they didn't touch her, but what do I do? I can't really report it because I don't want the police, to, I don't need the police to come because it's finished and I suppose you've been yelled at and <coughs> seen me. But we've, um, in talking to the residents, businesses report everything. They don't realise they can. They only think they can report something if they want police attendance. Um, but as the police told us in our um, workshop, report, 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 report. So they can get a dossier and we don't face that irritating, oh, well, there's been no blip in the, uh, um, you know, in the reports when you know that there, you know, there have been a change in behaviour. Also, I think it was very interesting uh, meeting the police, and I think we should do that more often. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Uh, Councillor Brown, you seconded the motion. Do you wish to Thank speak to me? No, just briefly, Lord Mayor, a lot of that Councillor Brown has already said <coughs> is very relevant. Um, look, I think um, it's been a pretty informative month or so in this part of the part of the city in a sense that I don't think a lot of the people here who are not either ward councillors or area councillors in some instances really knew how bad the situation had become. And uh, despite um, assurances in our um, uh, media or outlets that there are increases in reports, uh, I can certainly confirm that there, are, uh, there has been a significant spike in reports to myself, to Councillor Moran and probably others. Um, these are not um, incidental incidents. They are very often very serious criminal offences, aggravated assaults. Uh, there was a stabbing despite the fact that it's been reported uh, otherwise. Um, it's uh, been clarified from other means that, uh, that there certainly was a stabbing down there. And in any event, um, should uh, it be the case that somebody has become so intoxicated or drug affected they've fallen over somewhat inexplicably and landed on a broken bottle, stabbed themselves for the strikes me as being pretty dire in any event. So um, let's be very clear about this. This is not a witch hunt. Um, this is not uh, an opportunity to uh, throw stones at the vulnerable or whatever it may be that the you know, leftist media wants to point it out to be. Um, it is simply a, uh, an issue of security and an issue of safety. It's not an issue that's going to go away. Uh, it's an issue which we're going to continue to go on about until such time as it's resolved and we're going to do so without fear of slings and arrows of being called all sorts of names about being horrible to people. It's not about that. It's about the residents who live there and the businesses who have a right to walk around uh, in safety. So um, they need the right to go about their business. We need to do what we can. Uh, this, is, um, this is one opportunity that we can take uh, to, uh, to do something. We've got other irons in the fire as well. Uh, and we've got an opportunity to do a whole multitude of things. This is very much um, something which I think should be done, whatever the ultimate scenarios are. We're, we're speaking to the government. Um, our staff are producing a report which will come back to council uh, and uh, we will have an opportunity, I think, to explore all angles. So let's call it what it is. Um, it's a dangerous part of the city at the moment and we need to do something. Uh, this will go a long way. So I ask you to support it. Thank you, Councillor. Members, do I have any further debate regarding this matter? Councillor Hender. 
Yes, well, I'm not going to support this motion, um, not because I don't understand there are some problems, but because I don't believe this is an efficacious response to those problems. Um, and uh, I think we've um, we've been given information, uh, well, I, perhaps I'll put it this way. I, I was persuaded on the last occasion to vote for the investigation of, of CCTV in this area and sort of persuaded against my better judgment. Um, uh, I'm now reverting to my sort of my primary position, I suppose, which is that we have a process where we identify where we apply our resources in the city according to need and according to evidence-based needs. So we've got a committee who work out where our hotspots are and where we're going to apply CCTV and where we're going to apply other things, and we do that in an evidence-based way. Um, and um, and that's the process that I think we should follow. Um, I think we've been given information that CCTV in this location is unlikely to impact um, on, on the problem. Um, uh, and I'm also aware that this problem is not uh, a Hutt Street problem only. I mean, I know that it's also happening in my part of the city. I know it's happening down on North Terrace, uh, North, um, just off North Terrace on the river, particularly. So I, I've had, you know, I was trying to work out whether I could support some of the paragraphs here, but I, I don't think I can even do that because the, um, the, you know, establishing an incentive scheme for people in this part of the city, um, to me, is ignoring places, other parts of the city who um, who haven't been the squeaky wheel, I guess. Not, it's not to say they're not experiencing exactly the same difficulties, but they haven't. Um, actually, squeaky wheel is unfair, but they haven't been um, had um, haven't been as vocal about the problems that they're that they're having. So I would rather us um, take this, take the the approach which is evidence based um, and where we have a proper strategy for what the difficult identifying where the difficulties are and applying CCTV or whatever it is to those places. If this area is the area that requires the most uh, concern, that will come up in our in our process and uh, we'll, we'll apply the resources to it. Um, but I'm concerned about um, putting CCTV somewhere where it's actually not going to do any good and um, in circumstances where we've been told that it's unlikely to be monitored and, and all, of those, all of those issues. Okay. So, Councillors, if we could please allow the member that's speaking to speak. <coughs> Without the back chat, please, members. If we could do each other the courtesy, that would be a, a giant leap forward for 2018. Councillor Hendry, have you finished your debate? Well, I would just say a point of order here, and Councillor Moran is, is uh, pointing... Members, I've never voted for any motion I've ever put up. Members, council. this is not relevant. No. Members, this is not relevant. What can I be possible that you've done that to? That is that not true. It is true. I count every meeting. Members, as your presiding member, can we please listen to the conclusion of the comments by That's Councillor Hendry? Whatever I say, she vote against it. She often agrees with me. I agree with everything. Councillor Moran, what? I will not vote for it. That's what you say. Councillor Moran, Councillor Moran, I'm going to call point of order. <laughs> Councillor Hendry, where are you going? It's true. I think I feel when she constantly votes against me. Please. Members, do I have any further speakers? Councillor Martin, followed by Councillor Wilkinson. Yeah, look, uh, Lord Mayor, I'm just wondering whether or not we ought to uh, suspend the meeting for a moment so that we can all gather our composure. Uh, Councillor Martin, I will keep this matter proceeding. It is our last substantial matter of the meeting. Okay, Lord Mayor, look, um, let me uh, preface my remarks with two things. The first is that I, I have sympathy for any citizen in this city who experiences antisocial behaviour. And the second is that I often vote with Councillor Moran on a range of issues and Councillor Antic. Um, but I am not going to vote with them on this occasion. The reason that I'm not going to vote with them is that SAPOL have told us and the media clearly <laughs> there is no, no, this was published. It was published in the newspaper in Derby. The police have said there is no need for CCTV. They have said further. They said we'll have them all over the place, if you like. Members, but they have said. As, members, can I interject? May I also remind you that the briefing by SAPOL was a confidential briefing to this council. 
Please don't that. cross boundaries, Councillor Martin. I, I, I assert to you, Lord Mayor, that this information has been published previously. That is to say that the police do not support CCTV cameras. That is it. They do not support it. And on that basis, I will not support this. Now, let me move further. They have said, published, that Hutt Street is not a priority for them. There are other areas of the city where crime statistics suggest that there is greater antisocial behaviour. Now, in that circumstance, where they cannot support CCTV cameras, where they say there are other areas that are more important, then I cannot support this. Now, their view is that antisocial behaviour should be reported. And I agree with that. Then, then our systems can. We got a quorum. Councillor Moran, I think you collapse. You collapse the quorum, Councillor. Councillor Martin, do we have a quorum? We do have a quorum. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, that is the first priority, reporting these matters and enabling a police response. Now look, uh, let's be frank about this. This is actually all about the Hutt Street Centre, which has been in Hutt Street for 60 years, providing an extraordinarily valuable service to the city of Adelaide. It is a good neighbour, it is already working with St. Paul to try and help in any way that it can to stem these problems of antisocial behaviour. But Lord Mayor, I want to say also that uh, this kerfuffle has opened the door for some people, for some people to attach a nasty undertone to it. Yesterday, I and other councillors received uh, an email, a copy of a letter, which uh, suggested uh, that this was an issue related to Aboriginal people. It said clearly there was a link between the homeless, alcoholics, drug addicts and Aborigines. It was racist in my view, Lord Mayor. It was absolutely racist. And it allowed a denigrating spike. And that's what you do when you open the door in this way. Now, I, I counted in that email... It is, it is Councillor Martin. Um, the, the, the motion we have before us is regarding CCTV cameras. Absolutely, Lord Mayor. And I'm explaining to you why we should not entertain the prospect. Moreover, I'm saying to you that the kind of debate that's being fostered here has created an environment that allows every nutbag and racist in this city to attach their particular gripe to it. And look, it, it, it's enough to see you, Lord Mayor. It, I, I, I'll leave it there. I, look, I'm not going to uh, expand further on it, but I would, would say to you, Lord Mayor, that this needs to be nipped in the bud. There needs to be some leadership shown in the city. A matter that is primarily a police matter should be left to the police and kept right out of this council. Council Perryhan. Lord Mayor. I would like to move an amendment. So the council. Um, that council establish a working party of key stakeholders to investigate the extent and nature of crime and antisocial behaviour in the Hutt Street precinct. And that this working party develop a multifaceted response. Councillor, the... I'm sorry, I'm going to ask you to slow down. We need to capture this. Okay. Are you looking to add a point five? So Council One, establish a working party. Sorry, okay. Councillor Perrin, are you looking to, to maintain points one, two, three and four in the motion and add a point five? Add a five, please. Thank you. Mayor. If you could read that slowly, please. We will capture that on the screen. I'll then look for a second. Yes. Council One, establish a working party of key stakeholders to investigate the extent and nature of crime and antisocial behaviour in the Hutt Street precinct. And two, this working party... Slow down, Councillor, please. Yep. 
develop a multifaceted response to the identified issues including the possible reactivation of the Hutt Street Precinct Association. And I seek a second to Lord Mayor. Councillor Hender. Thank you. No, my mistake, Councillor Hender. Oh, Given that you've spoken Councilor to the matter, Chairman. you can't second the amendment. You can speak to the amendment once it becomes an amendment. Uh, do I have a seconder for the amendment, please? Yep. Councillor Slama, Councillor Clarehan, for all yours. Yes. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I don't deny that there may be some issues in um, Hutt Street, as there are all across the city, um, but I think we have to be very, very careful that any strategy we undertake is a collaborative one. It doesn't necessarily fall in, as the, into the responsibility of one agency, one person, or one mechanical device. We need a whole lot of strategies to address any issues that have been identified. And that's what worries me. If I can't get this one up, I'm not prepared to support it because I know from my work in the past, you do not depend on one device, be it a digital technology, technological device. It is just not as effective as having a multifaceted strategy. And that is why I'm putting this amendment up. The other thing is, if the police are working with the council, the Hutt Street, um, what's it called? Hutt Street Centre, and other and residents and and the and people on the in the precinct, we will not be able to have a concerted effort. To put in five CCTV cameras and stand back is not going to address the issue sufficiently. From what I've seen, there are some issues there. I wouldn't deny it. But we have to be sensible. We have to make sure that what any of the strategies and any of the money we spend is evidence-based, as Councillor Hender has already stated. And we cannot rely on CCTV. It is a false premise that it will solve any of the issues. If we really want to solve the issues, let's get the right people together to work on this and then report back to council. I've not asked that it report back to council, but I'm happy to add that to my amendment, if that's possible. Councillor, that was your three minutes. Mm -hmm. Councillor Clarehan. Could I ask that the working party report, report back to council uh, at the earliest possible convenience on its proposed strategies? I would need to look to your seconder and the general comfort of the room to proceed on that basis. Thank you, Councillor Slammer. Do I have the general comfort of the room members? I do. Thank you, Lord. Welcome Mayor. back, Councillor Moran. So, now, Councillor Slammer, we're dealing with an amendment. Uh, Councillor Summer, you seconded the proposed amendment. The floor is yours. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I, I think it's good. Um, it, it, it takes on board all of Councillor Moran's um, five cameras. You're happy to keep them there. Um, and and talks to how, how in the future we're going to resolve it. And, 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 and look, I was going to support the, the, the substantive anyway. Because, as I mentioned in committee, where my, my daughter's one of those victims. They, no, she's not a victim, but she, she used to go in there every three days a week to meet the girls who are right, and they won't go there anymore because it's the problems are real. They're not, you know, I don't care what the police says or people report. That they, they, there are issues, and we know there are issues, and it'd be um, negligible on this council not to act on. Councillor Antic as a Southwood councillor, and I certainly have gone down the fish and chip shop and beyond and spoken to all of them this week, and they all confirm that there are problems. So we're representing those businesses and we need to act on those. So I think this is good, it makes sense, and I'm, I'm, I thank Councillor uh, um, Clarion for, for those two extra points. I think that's a smart way of, of moving forward. 
Thank you, Councillor Slavos. So, members, you are debating an amendment which is the inclusion of points five and six. Councillor Antic, you had your hand up previously. Um, let me start with a question, Lord Mayor. I move October, I moved a uh, motion that there be a report back to Council um, where I would have assumed most of those items would have been picked up. So, I'm not sure whether or not that's relevant or whether or not anyone cares. Um, but I, uh, I think that's already covered in, in the initial report from October. So I, I understand to be uh, um, due imminently. Can I would you like that? confirmation of that yeah. from the CEO, Councillor Antic? CEO, would you like to confirm that as a question? Excuse me, I want to just ask Claire to clarify. Um, so the presiding member, the motion from Councillor Antic last October asked us to look at a range um, of different elements, including addressing the vacancy rates, um, addressing the perception of safety, um, and looking at how the general amenity of that precinct can be improved. The report that we're preparing for Tuesday the 13th of March for Council's consideration will address both in the short term and the long term, term some options um, and solutions um, for Council's consideration. Um, and certainly um, feedback has been received previously that perhaps um, the precinct association and looking at ways in which um, things like that can um, help build um, a bit more um, of a sense of community in a place um, would be one of the ideas that would be prepared for that report. Uh, follow up question. So, sorry. so all of the stuff that's been proposed there in the amendment is already being done. See you. Sorry, through the presiding member, parts of it are, parts of it are, parts of it aren't. Um, you know, I'm comfortable tonight to be able to, you know, take um, some of the suggestions on board and feed that back into the report um, for March. Okay, and so the, the motion that we're dealing with here is six points in length. It covers all of those points. No, whatever. Okay, so members, we're dealing with an amendment. Do I have any further debate with regards to the amendment? Councillor Hendon. Thank you. Um, Lord Mayor, look, I'm not sure whether quite this is what Councillor Claire Han is considering, but I very much support the idea of establishing a working party. And if I can just explain why I do that, because um, because I've had personal experience of this working very effectively. So, uh, as councillors probably know, I live on Whitmore Square. Um, I'm surrounded by agencies. We've got on Whitmore Square itself, we've got St Vincent de Paul providing homeless service, we've got uh, Salvation Army providing sobriety service. We've got St Luke's providing a homeless service, and just down the road we've got West Care providing a day centre. We used to have bar in place also just around the corner. I'm very familiar with the issues that arise from um, from these services and from the vulnerable people in the city. It's my daily life. Um, I, uh, before I got on council as a as a member uh, as a member of the community, we had a very significant escalation of difficulties in our area in Wright Street, and we at councils at council staffs instigation uh, um, established a working party. I have to say, when they told me that what they were going to do was establish a working party, I had a look on my face a little bit like Councillor Antic's look now, which is really, do you reckon that's going to help? Do you reckon it's going to help? Well, I can tell you it helped enormously. What happened was the council, through their officers, pulled together high-level people from the police, from council, from the services that council provide, but also from the sobriety group, from all of the agencies who um, had have dealings with, with the people who were, to some extent, being drawn into the city to, uh, to be provided with services at the agencies around. Um, and they got everybody thinking about what each of these parties could do to assist. Um, it took some time. It uh, took some time to burn itself into the consciousness, I have to say, of some of the parties who, who felt, uh, I think at that stage, some of the um, agencies felt a bit like the hotels used to feel, which once patrons had left their front door, they were no longer their responsibility. But the agencies, over time, uh, through this working party and through seeing how seriously the council and the police were taking this working party, the, the agencies lifted their game. 
Now, I'm not suggesting I think Hunt Street's always been a good agency, but, uh, but, uh, but I think bringing them to the table is a really important part of solving some problems, that they, they understand um, the issues deep, more deeply than most of us do because they're dealing with these people day to day. So that working group, in my experience, got people together, got them to the table. They had to come back and report to each other every month to say what they'd done. The police provided statistics to say what they were actually seeing changing on the ground. Residents were part of it. Businesses were part of it. We were also there saying what we were seeing on the ground. And we got a very significant change. The agencies, in fact, one of the, one of the agencies completely changed its hours of service and the way that it provided services as a consequence of that working party. It made a very significant difference, not just to us as residents, but also, I think, to the people who are being served by that community, by, by those agencies. We had a big drug problem at the time uh, and the police were aware of it. The agencies weren't as aware of it as they should have been and the police brought that, that to their attention. We got rid of the drug dealers out of the district. Uh, that working party was the most effective thing that I've seen in uh, in dealing with um, with the issues that, that we're faced with in Hutton Council, Street. that's your three minutes. Are you looking for additional time? No, we just have a couple of extra seconds. Members, I'll look to you. Yes, please Thanks. proceed. So I, I believe this, this um, these last two paragraphs are what will make the difference. And that, you know, I understand that some councillors have a different view to me. I don't believe that CCTV makes a difference. And one of the reasons I don't believe that CCTV makes a difference is because I was part of that working group where I was told by the police that that wasn't going to do, that wasn't going to be the thing that did it. What was going to be the thing that did it was everybody who was involved in this, everybody who cared about what was going on in that community, getting in there, putting their heads down, trying to work out how to make it better, and all of us working constructively and cooperatively to achieve the aim that we all wanted, safer streets, better housed people, a happier community. Uh, I, I fully support those last two paragraphs and, uh, and I'd love it if somebody was, if we were able to take it in part so that I could throw my weight behind what I believe to be the most effective solution. Thank you very much, Councillor Hendon. Now, members, we are debating a proposed amendment from Councillor Clarehan. Do I have any further discussion about the amendment? Councillor Clare, Councillor Martin, you'd like to speak to the amendment? Look, only to voice uh, support for it, Lord Mayor, this seems to me to be the most appropriate response, that is to identify the problem, who the stakeholders are, and then to begin the process, which may or may not include CCTV cameras, but is the consequence of a concerted effort. Uh, I will support this uh, on the understanding and the expectation that uh, it would be plainly ridiculous to implement two CCTV cameras before establishing a working party, which may or may not arrive at that conclusion. So, uh, yes, I will support this on that basis. Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I, I support the amendment, but I, I also support the substantive, um, including the installation of the CCT cameras. Um, the reason that we have got a CCT camera network in the city is because they do work, we know that they work, and it's not that our administration isn't already working with SAPOL on this. Um, I think that there has been, uh, which I did ask some questions prior to coming in here, I think there's been considerable thought and attention paid to it by administration. I know that they've been involved in lots of discussions uh, with the people on Hunt Street, with SAPOL, uh, with the Hunt Street Centre, and that there is a um, deterrent <coughs> from the CCT cameras also being able to uh, capture and record what is actually happening in the precinct. I also support the working party, um, and because, as you said, it's multifaceted, I do think CCT cameras are part of that delivery, uh, but also working with all the stakeholders. So I'm, I'm happy to support uh, the entire six points. Thank you. Thank you, dear members. So, members, I take you back to Councillor Clarehan and move the proposed amendment. The floor is yours to sum up on your proposed amendment. Look, thank you, Lord Mayor. I just wish to add that um, I wouldn't support this without the amendment because there's no point in us buying cameras if the police aren't prepared to monitor them. Um, however, it's my compromise position. I will support them on the basis that it's part of a whole suite of strategies that address the issues 
uh, once they've been identified and, and defined. Uh, I acknowledge that, that we've seen um, evidence of issues and that we need to do something, but it is really important that we think about working with the community. So we work with them, we don't do to them. So let's work with the community, let's share the responsibility for having an impact, let's all work together on this and approach it in an open and hopefully effective way. Thank you, Councillor Clarahan. Uh, members, I put this before you. Those in favour? Those against? So we now have a motion as amended. So members, do I have any further debate before which time I send you back to Councillor Moran who moved this substantive motion? Members, I'm going to make a quick comment if I may of my own before I hand you back to the mover to sum up. Is uh, members, Cameras themselves, of course, do not discriminate. We have cameras right around the City of Adelaide fulfilling various functions, whether they are the footbridge across the River Torrens or some of our other area, other parts of the city. Um, and I agree with the sentiment, members, that cameras by themselves are not the panacea. However, I'm sure they will help, and I think that's what the debate here is today. I think also, members, um, is that uh, this matter and this debate uh, may well bring out the, uh, the best in society and sometimes the not so best in society. So I thank you members for managing this debate with uh, sens sensitivity, empath empathy and some degree of compassion, which you will need to do, not only from today, but moving forward. Uh, this is a delicate matter, members. Uh, you're acutely aware of that. And uh, no one from this council chamber has even vaguely insinuated that the Hutt Street Centre is not delivering extremely important work in the City of Adelaide. No one's suggesting that. Um, but what we do is we've got behavioural issues uh, within that precinct and we can't ignore them. And uh, these cameras may help that, um, but however, uh, partnerships with the centre itself, with SAPOL, with local residents, property owners, business community and ourselves is the best shot we've got in terms of solving this issue. So, members, I'll hand you back to Councillor Moran to sum up. Members, I'll put this before you. Those in favour? Those against? Motion carried. Okay. Judy. Those members voting in favour of the motion as amended, please rise. Councillor Moran, Councillor Wilkinson, Councillor Slammer. Councillor Antic, <laughs> Councillor Martin, Councillor Clarahan, and the Deputy Lord Mayor. Okay, motion carried in favour. <laughs> Members, I'm going to see, uh, see I'd like to make a comment. Through Lord Mayor, just with item five, just want to confirm that we'll be bringing back a terms of reference and membership of that working party as part of the report on the 13th, just so you know. Okay, uh, members, uh, given that item 13.1 uh, has been moved to a um, future committee meeting, which I suspect will happen quite soon, uh, CEO, do you have any other matters you'd like to address to the members? You don't. Okay, we have another matter though, of course, 10.3, uh, which is the final, uh, towards the final uh, agenda item. Uh, Councillor Martin, motion on notice exclusion of the public request and confidentiality orders, page 85, Councillor Martin. Uh, yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. I was thinking this was the end of the evening. Um, uh, look, uh, very briefly, this is a, uh, a genuine question that goes to the, uh, the heart of uh, openness in, uh, in our governance. Um, uh, the catalyst is a, a rate payer who, Lord Mayor, you may know, uh, who expressed the view that this council is much Councillor, I'll, I'll pull you up there. Are you moving as printed, I presume? I am. Right, can I have a second to please, members? Oh, sorry. For the sake of the debate, Councillor, Councillor Wilkinson. Councillor um, Martin. Thank you. Yeah, the catalyst is a ratepayer who, uh, Lord Mayor, I think you know, uh, who expressed the view that this council was much more secretive than uh, its predecessor. Now, naturally, Lord Mayor, I, I defended the council and said that wasn't the case, uh, but it was suggested to me that it could be ascertained very quickly simply by gathering together the information uh, and uh, comparing uh, the number of 
matters which this council has uh, sought to exclude the public from, how many times matters have been heard in confidence, and how many times the administration has recommended the documents uh, from those discussions or associated are kept secret. And by taking the calendar years, 2015, 16, 17, and uh, 2011, 12, 13, you will see instantly what the outcome is. Uh, I see that the administration says it will take two days uh, to compare the electronic agendas uh, for all of those uh, 100 meetings or thereabouts. Um, I would have thought uh, that it would take a lot less, but nevertheless, um, I would uh, appreciate uh, the administration providing that advice and, of course, the support of members in, uh, in uh, voting for, in favour of it. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Your seconder was Councillor Wilkinson. I always support um, council operating as transparent a manner as possible. I'm very happy for that to be uh, that others recommend. Members, I look to you. Do I have any debate on this matter? Councillor Carahan? Yes, uh, Lord Mayor, look, I'm certainly uh, supportive of transparency and openness wherever possible. My concern with this motion is that it doesn't, it assumes that we're dealing with the same business year after year and that, for example, we don't have the market arcade development or the purchase of the Lacour new site or whatever. And my concern is that it's all about quantity without looking at the quality and the reasons why we may be um, considering things in confidence. Could I please have a comment from the, the administration in relation to this? CEO. Three little me, there's no doubt it is circumstantial um, from year to year, and it is true to say that a council, any council across the state could deal with multiple confidential items in one part of a year based on the circumstance, and that is the case with this council. Having said that, I believe that most of the information is freely available in our annual reports that we report on anyway, um, in an endeavour to be as transparent as we can. Um, I hope that answers your question. Uh, following question. Why, if it's available, why would it take two working days of someone's time to compile this? Through Lord Mayor, it hasn't been compiled. It's, it's, been, it's available in any annual reporting right. process, but we've not pulled it together by way of the comparison. Okay. Members, before I hand you back to the mover, in absence of any further debate, I, um, members, as you're all of course, very aware is that uh, this term of council has proven itself, I think, to be a very effective partner. And uh, we have partnered on a multitude of projects uh, through the last three years plus uh, in the variety of bikeways and laneways and tramways and real estate and uh, fast data networks and a multitude of things, of which, of course, that is required for commercial and confidence reasons. Um, various matters to be dealt with in confidence before which time they become public matters. And I think that's quite a reasonable expectation. So, I, CEO, I do hope, as this matter is being um, discussed by uh, your senior leadership group in terms of the response and the reporting of it, that, of course, that is either taken into account or that's just assumed uh, by the members and, of course, uh, by the ratepayers. Because, members, I think you can all take great pride in this term of council, that it, this term of council has proven to be an extraordinarily good partner with other levels of government, with private industry. And it means, on behalf of the ratepayers, that this term of council has achieved an extraordinarily amount more than what it otherwise would, because we're sharing the load and we're sharing the financial resources to deliver these jobs. Councillor Martin. Yeah, uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, there's no reason for everyone to feel uh, defensive about this, and the explanations that are being offered around the room as to why we uh, we may or may not have uh, more decisions in confidence uh, is slightly premature. I would expect that the administration in providing the information will provide the uh, contextual uh, details as well. But look, uh, I, I emphasize this information isn't entirely available in the annual report. The annual report uh, contains some of the information. This is for a much wider request. That includes requests for matters to be heard in confidence, discussions heard in confidence, and documents in support of those discussions which are in confidence. So it's a much broader thing uh, that I'm asking for. 
um, and frankly, um, uh, to you know, to be frightened of it, um, uh, would would suggest that there's a problem. I can't see what the issue is in just providing the information. Thank you, Councillor. Members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry the item 10.3. Uh, members, item 11, which is motions without notice. I see no hand, so I move forward. Members, the matter 12, of course, has now been deferred. See you in absence of any closing comments by you. I'm going to close the meeting. Okay. Members, can I please declare the meeting closed as it's 7.42 p.m. on Tuesday the 30th of February. I wish you all a happy Valentine's Day tomorrow and uh, thank you for your attendance and your participation. Thank you, members.